Now I'd just like to continue from my last video, which was all about can you reduce your flow temperatures on your central heating and still be warm, with this next video on how to size the radiators to see if they will take a flow temperature of 55 degrees. Now if you haven't seen the video last week on reducing the flow temperatures, then I'll put a link in the comment section down below and the description down below so you can check that out. Anyway, let's get on with it and find out exactly how we are going to size these radiators to see if they will go down to 55 degrees flow temperature. Before we go into this process now, I'd just like to start with a bit of a disclaimer. Now this is designed for general public really, just so they can check their radiators to see whether they're going to take this flow temperature of 55 degrees or not. This is not a tutorial for gas engineers or trainees, because I'm going to do a few cheats here, it's not the full process. So if you're a gas engineer or a trainee looking how to size a radiator, I'm going to be going through those videos pretty damn soon for you. This is just a quick and easy way for the general public to uh, size the radiators to see if they'll take a lower flow temperature. Now we can get on with it. Now to carry out this task, there's a few little things we're going to need. We're going to need a calculator. We're going to need a tape measure, you're going to need a pen and some paper and also we're going to be referring to these two little documents as we're going along but we'll talk about them in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is talk about the different types of radiators you could find in your house and when we're talking about radiators, radiators can have fins on the back or no fins on the back, they could have two, they could have one and you'll see that and the fins help the radiator work. Now, radiators shouldn't be really called radiators, they should be called convectors. They shouldn't really be painted white, they should really be painted black. So there's a few things that are wrong for the manufacturer. So the way a radiator works, it's cold air comes in at the bottom, so you need a gap of at least 150mm underneath your radiator to allow this cold air to come up. It then goes through the back of the radiator, it takes the heat from the back of the radiator, takes it over to the top of your ceiling and then the heat circulates round. It's called convection. So that's how a radiator works. So the warmest part of your house is at your ceiling. The coldest part of your house is at the floor level. That's why your dogs and cats get on the furniture in winter because they don't want to be lying on the cold floor. So that's the first thing. So in winter, wear some socks. Stops your feet getting cold. So let's have a look type uh, some call it a P1 and some call it a uh, Type 1 and basically that's just a panelled radiator without any fins on the back, okay? These little green things are the brackets, if that's what you're getting confused with. Now a Type K1 or a Type 11 is a single panelled radiator with one set of fins on the back. A P plus or a Type 21 is two panels with one uh, set of fins in the back. Again, these are the brackets. A Type 22 or a K2 is two panels with two sets of fins in the middle. And we've got a Type 33 or a K3 where we've got three panels and three lots of fins. So basically, it's a single panelled radiator bolted onto a double panelled radiator. So they're the different types of radiators. The more fins and the more panels you've got, the more heat your radiator gives out. So you could have a very long single panelled radiator with fins on. So you could have a very long K1, but you might only have a very short K3. So that's how radiators and work and how you can identify the different radiators. Now radiators were traditionally installed on the windows and that was because the cold air from the window would then help the convection but they don't necessarily need to go under windows now because of double glazing and triple glazing and secondary glazing. 
so they can go pretty much on any wall and if you put a radiator on an internal wall then it won't have any heat loss through the back of the radiator into the next room if the next room is the same temperature but if you've got a radiator on an outside wall the heat at the back of the radiator it could lose 10 percent of that heat through the outside wall because the cold outside wall is uh, drawing the heat through so you can put things like silver foil or deflectors around the back of the radiators if they're on external walls so that's another energy saving tip for your radiators also if you've got curtains above a radiator don't completely cover your radiator with the curtains because you're wasting your time with your radiator then tuck the curtains down the back of the radiator but then that will block the convection so just think about your curtains when you've got your radiators also the thermostatic radiator valve if you block that radiator valve then the radiator valve could cut off too early and your room could be cold so bear these few things in mind when you are thinking about having radiators moved or the position of radiators in your house now let's actually have a look at this sizing the radiators and checking to see whether they are uh, good enough for a 55 degree flow temperature which part L of the building regs is telling us to do now now the room we're going to be using is this classroom here at Tomcat and we've got a radiator installed underneath the window so first thing is I have sized the radiator so the radiator here is 450 mil high it is 1600 long and it is a P plus radiator so it's a radiator like this and it gives off from this radiator catalog because you're going to need one of these and they're quite easily able to get them off the internet it says it gives us uh, 6041 BTUs BTUs meaning British Thermal Units and if you want to know how many kilowatts there are in a BTU there are 3412 BTUs in a kilowatt. The easiest way to remember that, 3, 4 is a 12. So that's the radiator we're dealing with. Now, this is where the cheat comes in, and this is where gas engineers uh, would not be doing this. <laughs> I've just used this method for a long time now to quickly determine whether a radiator is big enough for a house or not. So we're going to measure this room in feet not meters it's important it's in feet so the width of this room is 10 feet the length of this room is 14 feet and the height of this room is 10 feet so we have got two outside uh, walls we've also got two windows but this doesn't take that into consideration so if we do 10 times 10 times 14 it comes to 1,400 feet cubed, or cubic feet. So if we take this 1,400 and we times it by three, it gives us 4,200. Now, where does this three come from? We have a number to times things by. If we're working out a radiator for upstairs, we would times it by two, the BTUs, if it's a well insulated room. And if it's not a well insulated room, we would times it by three. So you could say if it's a 1930s semi detached house, I would times it by three. But if it's a house built after 2008, I would times it by two. Now the downstairs, I would times it by three for a well insulated room or four for a not well insulated room. So that's where my three comes from. So we've now got. 4,200 BTUs as a rough guide because if I was to size this you would all be asleep now because the process is very very long and very complicated but if you are a gas engineer these videos will be coming soon now if you did watch the first video where I was talking about the flow temperatures coming into the radiators I talked about means water temperature and I talked about delta T so this is where your calculator comes in. Most of your radiators in your rooms could be set up with a flow temperature of 82 or a flow temperature of 75. So it's a very old house, very old radiators. They were probably set with a flow temperature of 80. And if it's been done within the last 20 years, it's probably been set with a flow temperature of 75. So this is how we work out our mean water temperature. 
So if our flow temperature is 75 and our return temperature is 65, because the radiators, we have a 10 degree difference across them, whereas boilers, we have a 20 degree across them, but old boilers had a 10 degree across them. But anyway, our radiators have probably worked out with a 10 degree difference between the flow and the return coming into the radiator. So if we divide that by two, it gives us a mean water temperature of 70. Now we are going to use a temperature of 18 degrees centigrade for upstairs for the bedrooms and 20 degrees for downstairs. Bathrooms are slightly different, um, kitchens are slightly different as well so you could say kitchen 18 degrees rather than 20. But anyway, this is just an example. If we take off this 20 degrees, because this is downstairs, then we would have a delta T of 50. And if you look on the radiator charts, they give us a delta T of 50 or a delta T of 60. And they will give you the size of the radiator required. So a delta T of 60 would be a flow temperature of 80, and a delta T of 50 would be this flow temperature of at 75. That's the first thing we need to do. Now I've worked out the delta T for 55 flow and 45 return, that gives us a delta T of 30, that's what we're aiming for now. So if we've got a new boiler being installed now or a new heating system now we're looking at a flow temperature of 55, a return temperature of 45 and a delta T of 30. Now another common one would be a flow temperature of 65, a return temperature of 55, which gives us a mean water temperature of 60, minus our room temperature gives us a delta T of 40. Now I'm trying not to go into too technical details here because it's not needed. What I've done is I need for this room 4,200 BTUs, but my radiator gives me 6,041. And again, if you've seen my uh, video, the other video about the radiators, we've been oversizing radiators for the last 20 years because we've all been scared of our customers getting cold. So this radiator is actually too big for a flow temperature of 75 degrees. What we need to do is we need to reduce this flow temperature. And obviously the more we reduce the flow temperature, it reduces our delta T. Now, I've said this uh, radiator catalogue has a delta T of 50 and 60, which it does. So I can't size the radiators from that. But Stellrad radiators have given us this technical information sheet where you can use a figure to help us to resize the radiators from their catalogue. Now, if we're looking at a delta T of 30, we look down this left-hand column here till we get a delta T of 30. We look across in our centigrade and it gives us a figure here. And it gives us a figure of 0.515. Now, we take our radiator BTUs, not our room. Okay, that's important. So our radiator BTU is 6,041. We times it by this figure, 0.515. That gives us an output now with a low flow temperature, so our 55 degree flow temperature, of 3,111 BTUs. But I need 4,200. So a delta T of 30 is no good to me. So this flow temperature of 55 degrees ain't gonna happen. It's gonna be cold in this room. I will not be able to get it up to 20 degrees what I need. Now if I do a delta T of 35, and again this tells me a delta T of 35, it tells me it's 0 0.629. So again, if I take my BTUs, again from the radiator, not from the room, it gives me 6,041 times by 0 0.629, gives me 3,799 BTUs. Still not right. So for my delta T of 35, it ain't happening. So if I go for a delta T of 40, remember, a delta T of 40 is a flow temperature of 65, a return temperature of 55, which gives me a delta T of 40. I've got my 6,041 
times from that chart, 0.748 gives me 4,518, which is in big enough now for this room to heat it at a flow temperature of 65 and a return temperature of 55. Now this return temperature is important because if we keep it lower than 55, it will be in condensing mode. So hopefully this boiler with these settings would stay in condensing mode. This is the important thing. If you turn your flow temperature down too much and your house goes too cold, you're wasting your time anyway. You might as well not have your boiler on, get a jacket on, get a hat and gloves on, get your blanket, sit there watching telly. But you don't want to do that because you'll get cold, you'll get poorly, and you can cause uh, damp and mould in your house. So this is important to help you to see how far you can reduce your flow temperature. And again, this is just going into stuff which is a bit technical. So if you're not technical at all, try and follow this. But if you're not, then just keep turning it down your flow temperature little by little till you get to the right temperature where you feel comfortable. Don't forget, this is all in conjunction with uh, room thermostats and your uh, TRVs on your radiators. It's massively important uh, reducing these flow temperatures to be able to pay our gas bills because what they're talking about our gas prices going through the roof we need to still live now our wages aren't going up with this but we still need to live we still need to put food on the table okay and we still need to keep warm because we need to keep well so that is my hopefully quick look and easy look into quickly sizing radiators to be able to see what is the minimum temperature I can get my flow temperature on the boiler to be able to be comfortable. And again, the lower you can get this room temperature, if you could get that room temperature down to 18, 19 degrees downstairs, then you'll save even more money. So wear a jumper but then it will stop your house going too cold because if your house goes lower than five degrees, then you're gonna get burst pipes everywhere as well. So you're not just gonna be cold, you're gonna be wet also. So hopefully you've liked the video. Don't forget the links down below for the video first and if you haven't watched that one, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers guys.